So at this point, you're thinking, wow, this is, do you, are you trying to, are you in the head frame of this is so intense, but I've still got a baby in there that I've got to be strong for and... At the time, no. At the time, I was just thinking how bad that was and how heartbreaking that was. Um, and then, you know, because you don't want to delay the feelings. You know, I'm not a big fan of going, okay, that didn't, you know, I'm going to deny pain for the sake of the greater good. You know, yeah. you've got to deal with it because that stuff doesn't go away. No. It never goes away anyway. But I certainly didn't want it to keep rearing its head because I hadn't addressed it. And I wasn't even thinking along those lines. I felt devastated. I was devastated. I was completely heartbroken and I didn't feel any desire or pressure not to give into that. Mm -hmm. So that's what it was. And then I, of course, started to focus on what was instead of what wasn't yeah. anymore. And, but then the complications existed from the very beginning of this pregnancy. I was bleeding even before I found out I was pregnant. Right. So the blood, I had blood every single day. Right. And that's very alarming. Yeah. So, you know, originally it was probably because that there were three and then, but it never stopped. So every day I would be bleeding wow. before the reduction, after the reduction and throughout that whole pregnancy. Did it ever feel right to you? Was there a, a moment, did you feel like, okay, things can be okay here? Or were you always a little bit like, this doesn't feel right? Um, I didn't, I, I sort of felt confident that the, the singleton would be okay. Like I didn't, I wasn't fearful of that, except that the blood was there. Mm. So I would go and see my doctor very regularly, like, you know, I saw him more than George. <laughs> um, but just to say, look, I'm really worried, or am I miscarrying, or why is this blood, or can we find where this blood's coming from? And they can't a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, it could be this, or it could be that, and 50% of pregnant women bleed, and you know, there's, they can't be, they can't get in there to see exactly what's happening. Mm. Um, and you feel so vulnerable and scared because it, you know what, what started off as a dream was becoming, you know, it's such a such a huge nightmare. So I, I, I was still holding my breath, yes. I was trying, intellectually, I wanted to celebrate that, you know, that, that I was pregnant, mm. but um, I, there was a lot, of, a lot of fear around what I was witnessing every day. Yeah, my God, because even when you have quite a normal pregnancy, it's still scary, you yeah. know? You still, you wait for those yeah. weeks to go by so yeah. everything gets a little bit, you know, you just get a bit more reassurance with every week. But it was almost like with every week for you, it was almost less and less reassurance. Yeah, I just kept trying to oh, wait till I get to the 19 mm. week scan and that's where you find out the gender, you know, conclusively. Yeah. And um, so then on that day, you know, um, which was a great day for only the briefest time, mm. um, we found out we were having a girl. So that was such a great moment. And literally minutes later, they brought the doctor in and the doctor said, you're still in a high risk category and we're really concerned about this bleeding. Mm. So that moment was so brief. So brief. And, and so you don't know whether to celebrate, you don't know, you know, you're in this sort of no man's land of not knowing how to, how to accept it and what is good news and what is bad news and they were always coupled together yeah. this whole pregnancy had had good here's the good news here's the bad news yeah and bad within news. seconds of each yeah. other yeah. yeah it's really really difficult 